Hey guys, it's David from TheUnlocker.com, and today we're reviewing the new Nexus S. Okay, so first let's talk about what a Nexus phone actually is. We have the two phones that are out right now with the Nexus name, which is the Nexus One and the new Nexus S. Now you notice in the back of phones, the manufacturer's name down at the bottom is the same size or smaller than Google's name up here at the top, and there's a reason for that. Google supposedly designed these phones even though they were manufactured by HTC and Samsung. Uh, they basically wanted to have a phone with the best experience of Android they possibly could give, is the idea. So there's no bloatware on top of Android, it is just Android. There is no bloatware from the manufacturer, there's no bloatware from the carrier. It's just Android the way it comes if you compile it yourself in the open source project plus Google's apps, and that's that. Now Google didn't just want to revolutionize the way that an Android phone could work. They also wanted to revolutionize the way you purchase your phone. Instead of going to a carrier and maybe that only that carrier has that phone because they have an exclusivity contract, uh, and you can't buy it on the carrier that you already use, you have to switch carriers, blah, blah, blah. They said, we'll put the phone on google.com slash phone. You choose the carrier you want to use it on. We make it work for that carrier, we send it to you, and that's that. Um, issue with that was a lot of the carriers didn't want to play ball. Um, it's not the way things are usually done here in the States. They want their exclusivity contracts. They use the phones to get subscribers on their company as opposed to, you know, free-for-all. And some didn't work out. Also, Google didn't want to do any marketing campaigns with traditional media. For example, TV, radio, etc. They just did an AdSense campaign because they own AdSense. And that's pretty much it. So, long story short, didn't work out. The Nexus One was eventually discontinued and retired to just developers. You have to sign up as a developer to purchase the phone. Um, and the google.com slash phone site became a whole different thing. Now, at that point, Google vowed never to make a Nexus Two. And technically, they didn't because this is a Nexus S. Okay, now the Nexus S does share the same pure Google concept and doesn't have custom interfaces from Samsung with the manufacturer on it. Uh, now besides making the phone run faster, because it doesn't have all the bloatware on top of it to slow it down, this does have a, one other major benefit. The Nexus S comes preloaded with Google's latest version of Android, which is 2.3, which is also called Gingerbread, and as with the original Nexus, will continue to be the first devices that will get future updates of Android before any other phone. Okay, there's a very simple reason for that. Basically, Google can just make their Android update, 3.0, whatever it is, send it out to the phones, done. As opposed to the carrier phones, they have to send it out to the manufacturer. The manufacturer has to add their stuff to it, update all of their custom interfaces, all of their apps. Then they also have to put in the, the carrier stuff, this can take a couple of months, and then they send out the update. So by that time, at least in the past, a new update from Google had already come out, and the manufacturers were just trying to play catch-up. Okay, so with the Nexus phones, you get that update. It pops up on your phone as a notification. You click Apply, and that's it. Done. You've got the new Android version. No need to wait. As soon as it's out, it's on your phone. Okay, so quickly, we're going to address the whole unlocked phone thing. Now, the Nexus One and the Nexus S were both unlocked phones. Now, that means you can put any carrier SIM card into the phone that you want, and it will automatically start working. You don't have to unlock it with a code or hack it or any of that type of stuff. Um, but the problem is, here in the States, that doesn't really make too big of a difference, and I'll tell you why. Basically, the phone is GSM, which means it requires a SIM card. The only two carriers in the U.S., major carriers, that use SIM cards are AT&T and T-Mobile. Now... Yes, you can put an AT&T SIM card in the phone, and it will work. But the issue is that Samsung only put T-Mobile's 3G frequencies into the phone. Now, basically what that means is even though you have an AT&T SIM card in the phone, you can make calls and send texts and all that stuff, your internet speed is going to be edge, not 3G, which is kind of a pain. So, even though it's unlocked, here in the States, the only carrier you really want to use it on is probably T-Mobile. Okay, so as with all the Android reviews we do, we're not going to talk too much about the software for the phone. Yes, this is a new version of Android, but we have a separate video that's going to be all about Android 2.3. Um, so if you are curious about the changes between 2.3 and 2.2, you can check that video. This is our phone review, so we're going to talk about the phone as a whole. That means that for most Android users, the Android 
interface is going to be the same as they've always been used to, minus the little tweak that 2.3 brought. Um, but eventually, those phones are going to get 2.3 as well, so it's not fair to really judge it based on its software. As far as hardware is concerned, there are a few little things that Samsung did to this phone. Uh, the first of them being a slightly curved phone. I don't know if you can even tell that much, but it is slightly curved, maybe to about there. And it curves back out. Um, this, they say, is to help it curve to your face a little bit better, pick up sound better, etc. I uh, haven't really noticed a difference between this and, say, any other curved or non-curved phone. Uh, but it is kind of cool that they were able to do that with the screen. Okay, other things about the front end of the device you're going to notice is the capacitive buttons down here. These are pretty much what most Android phones have nowadays. They are in a little bit different order than the original Nexus. I believe the home and the search are switched. Um, but yeah, these are touch sensitive, so when you tap on them, they vibrate slightly and they bring up different things on the screen. Uh, I personally am not a big fan of capacitive buttons. I feel like no matter how sensitive they try to make them, they still don't always work when I need them to. I prefer actual physical buttons, uh, but to each his own. Okay, the other thing you may or may not notice about the front of this device uh, is it does have an ambient light sensor up here at the top left. This is used so that whenever you are in a phone call, you put it to your face, it'll turn the screen off so you don't tap it with your cheek. It also is used for adjusting the brightness automatically if you have it set to do that. The other thing you'll notice is over here is a VGA video camera. Now this is used for video calling or if you just kind of want to look at yourself and use the phone as a mirror, up to you. But the reason that's there is because the new version of Android, Android 2.3, does have video calling built in. Uh, you don't have to use a third-party app, which I find don't work very well usually. Um, so we're hoping that the new integrated VoIP and, uh, and video calling will work a lot better. Now for the casing of the phone, uh, Samsung went with the same thing they went for all their Galaxy phones. It's a hard plastic that's kind of all the way around. Uh, it's all one solid piece here at the back, so if you wanted to take out the battery pop the entire thing off, um, but again, it's just basically a piece of plastic. Uh, we wish that they would have gone with something metal or something a little nicer, but it's not really that big of a deal, um, if you don't mind, because it is at least a nice glossy look to it. The phone does look very sleek because it's pretty much black all the way around when the screen's off. Okay, the other thing you are going to notice on the back here is the camera. It is a 5 megapixel camera, same as, say, the Nexus One kind of wish they would have upgraded it, but 5 megapixels is pretty decent. Now the back also has a flash for the camera, which is something some of the Galaxy S phones do not have, which is annoying. I'm glad that this phone has it, because in any type of low light situation, you're not going to take a picture at all if you don't have some type of flash. Uh, you also have your little speaker here on the back for speakerphone, etc. On the sides, we have volume rocker over here. This actually protrudes quite a bit, which I like because it's easy to adjust the volume when you need to. On this side, we have the power and lock button instead of on the top where it normally is on uh, most phones. So you can just tap that to turn the screen on and off. Uh, and then down here at the bottom, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Uh, usually that's normally at the top of a phone. There are some phones that have it at the bottom as well. Teach his own about that. I don't really care. I'm indifferent. We also have the micro USB connector for charging and for using other accessories. The screen itself is similar to the other Galaxy S phones. It is a super AMOLED screen, uh, which means it's got really vibrant colors compared to a regular LCD screen and good contrast ratio, so the blacks seem a little blacker and stuff like that. Um, but it is a 4-inch screen, just like the Galaxy S phones, um, so it is slightly larger than, say, the original Nexus, even though they both are AMOLED screens, and there you go. Okay, Samsung also did remove a few things from the original Nexus. Um, there is no trackball or optical trackpad or anything like that. Uh, so highlighting little things you're going to have to use your finger instead. Uh, there is also no notification light, which the Nexus one had as its trackball. This would light up depending if you had an email. It would be a different color and text message, etc. Now the trackball is not too big of a problem because Android 2.3 does kind of address highlighting text, at least, um, where it gives you little cursors that you can use inside text, which is great. Um, but the other thing is that, you know, the no notification light, I like that because I like being able to look at my phone from far away if I missed a call and just see that it blinks, and then that way I know I have a voicemail or I have a text message or something if I didn't hear it. Um, but again, not too big of a deal. I pretty much check my phone regularly. Anyway, I'm sure most of you do as well. 
Okay, now as far as performance is concerned, both phones have a one gigahertz processor. But the Samsung uh, Nexus S has Samsung's Hummingbird processor, whereas the Nexus One has Qualcomm's Snapdragon processor. Okay, the only real difference, even though they both have a one gigahertz processor, is that the Nexus S's processor also has a better graphics chip accompanied with it. Now, the graphics chip handles all of the graphics, so images, videos, the swiping of the home screen and stuff, because that has to load all these graphics on it, uh, the background running, etc. So because it has a better one of those, it actually handles those kinds of things a little bit better, and overall, those things are throughout the entire operating system, so you get better performance throughout. Okay, to give you the difference between the two processing powers, uh, even though they have the same clock speed, we're going to run a little test. So there you go. Both have the same clock speed of their processor, but obviously because of the better graphics, this one runs games and motion and anything that has to do with graphics, which is a lot of the operating system, just that much better. Okay, so overall, the Nexus S is a great phone. It has good features. Um, it's made by Samsung, which is a respectable company. It has all of the crap bloatware stuff that the manufacturers and, and carriers usually put in and taken out. So it is a smoother phone than, say, its counterpart, like the Galaxy S, even though it has similar hardware specs. Um, it is a Google phone, so it means it's going to get all of its updates directly from Google without having to wait for the carriers and the manufacturers to put their stuff into it, which could take months. Um, so you're guaranteed to always have the latest firmware. Uh, it does add some new features that are all integrated into Android 2.3, like the video calling, uh, NFC, which is near field communications, which we don't use here in the States yet, but it's nice to know that you have it if someone ever develops something to use with it. Um, and a few other features it has as well. Now the big disappointment uh, for most people when they look at this phone is that it's supposedly a sequel to the Nexus One. Um, and because of that they compare it to it. Now the Nexus One has very similar specs is the problem. I mean even the camera is the same, a 5 megapixel. Uh, when we have phones now that have 8 megapixels you could have at least bumped up the camera to give someone one more reason to switch. Um, the video uh, calling in the front forward facing video camera is a plus from the Nexus. Um, the super AMOLED LED screen instead of AMOLED LED screen uh, is just better contrast basically is what the difference is. It has uh, deeper blacks and lines are a little cleaner and stuff like that. The screen also uh, besides being Super AMOLED is also larger, which I like as well. I'm sure most people do. Um, it's not too large, it's just larger. Um, but besides all that, and having the new software on it, which the Nexus will get, the original Nexus one is going to get 2.3 relatively soon, um, there's not much benefit to going from a Nexus one to a Nexus S. Um, the other features we'd like to see that maybe would have pushed more people from Nexus Ones over are HSPA Plus, which T-Mobile's new, it's T-Mobile's new quote-unquote 4G network. Um, that would have been faster internet for the device, which would have been nice. Uh, like I said, the better camera could have been easy for them to replace, easy for them to change. Uh, and just a few other little things, a faster processor, why not a dual core? Those are coming out pretty soon. Why not, you know, make a big splash like the original Nexus did when it came out with all of its uh, new hardware. It kind of revolutionized the way that most Android makers make their Android phones. This one, not so much. Um, but again, besides all of that, it is a nice device. Uh, if I had a Nexus One already, I don't know if I would trade up uh, because the only features are what we mentioned. The video calling is probably the coolest part, but again, you have to have other people with front facing video cameras and those are kind of limited. Um, so if I had an Nexus One, I might not switch because I'm going to get all the cool features that are in 2.3 in an update soon enough. But coming from other phones, for example, if you were looking at a Vibrant phone, uh, which is a Galaxy S phone on T-Mobile, you might choose this one over that simply because it's similar price point. Uh, it doesn't have all the bloatware that Samsung put on the phone, so it actually runs a little faster than that phone. Um, it's also going to be very easy, easily rooted uh, because there is probably a command in it. We haven't tried it yet, but there's probably a command in it to let you root it uh, very simply because Google likes to put that in there because they like us making ROMs, etc. Um, so you're going to have extra features built in from that as well. Also, the phone itself does feel nice. I mean, even though it is 
plasticky and it kind of feels cheap with that. The weight is nice. It's not too heavy. It's actually a very light phone, again, probably because of the plastic. Um, but it, it, it's a nice little phone to use. And even though the curve is not very much, it is a nice little touch. Uh, I also like the little backwards chin thing on the back here. It makes it fit in your hand a little easier. Uh, and other than that, it's a, it's a nice little device for someone that doesn't already have probably a Nexus 1.